in today's video, we're going to talk about why I think that the ABOS Tetras is the best drying solution for your Bamboo Lab printer, but also why it is a solution that I don't recommend you buying for yourself. But in order to fully explain this a little bit better, I think it's time we take everything from the beginning. This ABOS Tetras was sent to me for free by ABOS, but please remember that the Sunlu AMS heater was also sent to me for free by Sunlu. And the Bamboo Lab AMS 2 Pro we are going to talk about in this video as well was also kindly provided to me by the local distributor 3D Mart. So huge thanks to all these companies for their support to make this video possible. And the very short one sentence explanation of what this Tetras and the Sunlu AMS heater is, is that these are filament dryer add-ons to the first generation AMS. Neither of these are compatible with the second generation AMS 2 Pro and you do need to have a first generation AMS in order to install the Tetras or the Sunlu AMS heater on a top or in this case around the first generation AMS. Quick recap regarding the Sunlu AMS heater. It is super easy to install. You literally just swap the AMS lid, remove the original one, and then just add on the AMS heater as a new lid to your AMS. And then we do have the ABOS Tetras, which does take a little bit more time to get properly installed. And the first question that at least I had when I saw this dryer online was, how does it affect my original AMS? And to be honest, it doesn't really affect your original AMS at all. But instead of only being a new lid on top of your AMS, uh, we do have a lid on top, but then we also have some events on the back and then also some controllers in the front and also a stand underneath. So it's very much a full 360 package when it comes to the Tetras, but in terms of the actual functions of the AMS and inside of the AMS, for example, if you want to take it apart to maybe change one of these PTFE tubes, if you have some filament stuck in there, other than just adding these acrylic plates here in the middle to create four uh, subdivisions inside of the AMS, uh, you don't really interfere with the actual AMS part of the AMS and, and you don't have to like unscrew or, or remove any parts inside of the AMS. One thing that you should be extremely careful with when it comes to the installation, 99% of the time uh, it's super easy, you just follow the instruction book and you have literally everything uh, not spelled out for you but illustrated for you in, in pure IKEA fashion. But when it comes to these uh, acrylic bafflers or baffles, I think they call them. I ran into some issues because it was a little bit unclear on how to install them properly. And, and honestly, I would not be able to explain it to you either, to be honest. I did it the wrong way. So I actually got one of these uh, acrylic plates stuck underneath here in between the, the feeder, the filament feeder and the, the front plate. So yeah, I spent way too long time just trying to like fish this up uh, in front. I'm not gonna show you what I did because uh, I God knows how long time I need to wait again. But the, the next time I did it for the, the th or the third time, it went super fast. I guess it's a little bit hit and miss when it comes to this specific part during the installation process. The second thing that may not be that important, but uh, that is that when you have installed these extra acrylic plates or, or baffles, you do lose a little bit of space and convenience when it comes to replacing the, the desiccant holders that you might have already installed in your AMS. Now, you might argue that after adding the Tetras, uh, you don't really need these desiccants because the whole point of you having the Tetras is to not only dry your filaments, but also also using the humidity mode so you can actually keep the humidity lower without using these desiccants in your Tetras. And I guess technically you could just design uh, just smaller holders for these uh, desiccant bags. Uh, but yeah, it will still be like an extra step in order to, to replace them. And uh, I'm just terrified of, of ever having to deal with, with these acrylic situations again. So I will not install that in uh, this one. And speaking about different humidity modes and the actual functionality of Tetras, can it dry up to 65 degrees Celsius? And during my own testing and using all my different kinds of filaments, I've actually never seen a difference 
difference between 8 hours at 65 degrees Celsius and 8 hours at 70 degrees Celsius. But I guess that if you do want to be 100% sure, you can just add an extra one or two hours if you are drying at 65 degrees Celsius. Personally, I do not care at all regarding this five degrees difference because every single drying session using any kind of filament from any kind of provider in either the Abos Tetras or the Sunlu AMS heater have all worked perfectly and I never had an issue with wet filament after one of these drying sessions. Assuming of course that I do change the included presets for these different filaments that are included in the Abos Tetras since apparently they think that two or four hours is enough for example for PTG but in my case I need at least a good six or maybe even eight or nine hours at least when I am drying PTG. But speaking about these presets included in both these AMS dryers this is where the main differences between the ABOS and Sunlu starts. When using the Sunlu AMS heater, if you are switching between different materials, only the temperature actually changes and the drying time always stay the same. So for example, if you always dry for six or eight hours, that will work no problem whatsoever. But if you do tend to switch, so you dry for example, PLA only four hours and PETG eight hours, then you might find these <coughs> presets a little bit annoying. In comparison, the Abos Tetras saves both the temperature and time for each single preset. So once you've set it up, for example, PLA at 50 degrees for six hours and PETG at 65 degrees for eight hours, you can just forget about all these different settings. The only catch is that you do need to set it up four different times since you do need to set it up once for each heater individually. Because another big difference and arguably the biggest difference between the Tetras and the Sunlu AMS heater and most likely the main reason for why you're even looking at the Tetras in the first place is that the Sunlu only has one massive lid covering all four different spools, meaning that if you are blasting that dryer at 70 degrees Celsius for eight hours to dry your PTG, for example, you better make sure that you don't have any PLA spools in the AMS at the same time, since 70 degrees is way too hot for PLA and it will then start to almost melt and at least stick together on the spool, causing all different kinds of issues. But what is unique with Tetras is that these are four very much separated dryers that just happens to be located right next to each other to fit here on one single AMS. So you can dry one spool of ABS or ASA here in the middle while having PLA or PETG on both sides without any issues at all. And as a side note, the AMS2 Pro also has this one chamber design, same as the Sunlu AMS heater. But since the AMS2 Pro is directly connected to the printer and also supports the RFID tags on Bamboo Lab spools, it will keep track on the material for you and will let you know which spools that needs to be removed before you can even start the drying process. And one more thing regarding the AMS2 Pro that might be very well worth knowing if you are thinking about upgrading your current drying solution. That is that according to Bamboo Lab, currently drying is not supported for AMS2 Pro or HT that are actively involved in the printing process, including those that may be used for automatic refill during the current print job. Printing while drying is not yet supported. I don't know about you, but I read that as printing while drying will be supported at least sometime in the future. But that is something that is already possible with the Tetras or the Sunlu AMS heater, since these both units are two separate units that are added on top or in the Tetras case around the AMS. And last thing, since we are on the topic of future functions of the AMS2 Pro, the AMS2 Pro will be compatible with A1 and A1 mini printers through an over the air update in Q3 2025. So that is amazing news for any current or maybe future A1 or A1 mini owner who for some reason did not get an AMS Lite together with a purchase and have regretted the decision ever since. In addition to the four versus one chamber design, the Tetras is also a lot more automatic and a lot more it just works approach when it comes to the overall drying workflow. Just as an example, on the Sunlu, you have to manually open and close the vent, which should be open when you're actively drying so all the humid air has a chance to escape, but then you should close it when you are in humidity mode so no humid air comes into the AMS. With the Tetras, the vents just open and close all by themselves and the four different vents just open and close individually. And it also has an optional three step approach or a second drying stage as I think they call it which is uh, the normal drying to whatever temperature and time that you have set followed by a warm hold that I assume should be 
for the entire duration of your upcoming print just to make sure that it's a more consistent feeding and to reduce the friction of the filament at least that is as as far as my own research has taken me if there will be any other reason for this prolonged heating period uh, please do let me know in the comments below and then after this prolonged heating period they will then automatically switch to a humidity maintenance mode which you also can set to between 20 or 70 percent meaning that the machine machine will just take care of everything to make sure that the humidity inside of your AMS is at your preferred percentage. And I think that is everything that you need to know about the Abos Tetras. If you have any other questions at all, please do let me know and I can do all different kinds of additional testing. But just as uh, at least an attempt for me to summarize everything that I have said here today, if you don't have a first generation AMS already, just go with an AMS 2 Pro right away. Uh, don't think about buying a first generation AMS in order to then upgrade it with the drying function, either with the Tetras or the Sunlu AMS. AMS heater. And again, if you do want to use an AMS with your Bamboo Lab A1 or your A1 Mini, you definitely should get an AMS 2 Pro. Since the AMS 2 Pro is the only AMS from Bamboo Lab that has been confirmed to at least be compatible sometime this quarter. But if you already have a first generation AMS or if you manage to find one second hand or very, very cheap, then I 100% recommend upgrading it with an AMS filament dryer instead of getting a separate dedicated dryer because the convenience of having it all almost integrated at least uh, into the AMS is absolutely amazing and it's so much more convenient than having a separate dedicated standalone dryer like the the, the Porifemus uh, that I tried from from Abos before and I have to say the the Abos Tetras is just better than the Sunlu AMS heater in pretty much every single way other than maybe when it comes to the one time installation process that is a little bit more tedious on the Tetras and also when it comes to the price because the Tetras currently is being sold as an early bird for $179.99 but you can get the Sunlu AMS heater for $119 USD. But this is where the plot twists of plot twists comes into the video because Abos has another AMS filament dryer called Dias which is the same as Tetras but it has two chambers instead of four. And this Abos Dias do have an early bird price of you guessed it, $119.99, which puts it at the same price level as the Sunlu AMS, but with a lot more functionality. Based on my experience with the Tetras and also the Polyphemus from Abos that I've been trying before, I'm confident that the Dias also will dry your filament without any issues whatsoever and most likely be the best purchase for anyone looking for a heater upgrade for their first generation AMS. Although I have to say that having four separate chambers and four separate heating units is really really nice. You do have some affiliate links to both these products down in the description below. These links do help me and support my channel without any extra cost for you. Again, thank you all so much to both Abos, Sunlu and 3D Mart for sending me these products for free and to make this video possible. And an even bigger thank you to you for watching this entire video. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Lucas. It starts with L and like, ends with S and subscribe. Please do both and see you all in the next one.